Hello, District 50. This is Karen Krukenberg. I'm the Library Media Specialist at Harvard High School. And for this edition of Wellness Wednesday, I'd like to address social media use and mental well being. At this time of social distancing and isolation, social media can be an invaluable tool for keeping you in touch with friends, loved ones, and the wider world. But be mindful of how it makes you feel. While many of us enjoy staying connected on social media, excessive use can fuel feelings of anxiety, depression, isolation, and fear of missing out. Excessive social media use can create a negative self-perpetuating cycle of negative thinking. When you feel lonely, depressed, anxious, or stressed, you use social media more often as a way to relieve boredom or feel connected to others. Using social media more often, though, increases fear of missing out and feelings of inadequacy, dissatisfaction, and isolation. In turn, these feelings negatively affect your mood and worsen symptoms of depression, anxiety, and stress. Negative comments or lack of interaction can also have a very negative impact on mood. These worsening symptoms can cause you to use social e media even more, and so the downward spiral continues. If spending time on social media exacerbates your stress, anxiety, and uncertainty, take steps to limit your engagement. And this is important, always check reputable news sources before believing or forwarding any rumors about COVID-19 that may cause panic. Think about taking these steps to modify your social media habits. Start your day intentionally. As easy as it is to pick up your phone and start scrolling from your bed, it may not be the healthiest way to begin your day, as you cannot control what you're going to see. And put your social media to bed a few hours before you retire. Support a healthy online community. Before your comment, let your words pass through three gates. At the first gate, ask yourself, is it true? At the second gate, ask, is it necessary? At the third gate, ask, is it kind? Follow people and things that bring you joy. A lot of social media content is highly curated and may represent lifestyles and attitudes that don't exist. To account for this, consider limiting the number of people you follow on social media. This could mean only following those who are close to you, make you feel good, or will be there when you need them. It's very important to remember, you are connecting, not comparing. If you get your news primarily from social media, you have to be very careful. Get into the habit of using the SIFT method for evaluating the information you see on your social media feeds. The SIFT method is an intuitive method that fact checkers have mastered to help identify unreliable information online. If you see something on social media that triggers an emotional response, you should stop and examine that emotion before you interact, share, or respond. Next, investigate the source of the information. Who is posting this information and why? What is their motivation? Third, Find other coverage from credible journalistic sources and see if you can verify the information. And finally, trace back to the origin of the information. The SIFT method is something that we explore at length in library media class. And if you are interested in learning more about the SIFT method or how to teach it to your students, please feel free to contact me. I've included the links so you can view the complete slideshow, which has links and more detailed information. Thank you for watching, and please have a safe and healthy holiday season.